<laughs> Whatever it is that we're talking about here, since more and more people ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you could look at it on a positive thing. Is, you know, people that stop, I'll say Kai Root instead of me, and say things like, I see you on TV. It almost sounds like a Kai Root, though. And some of the most positive comments are things like, Yes, sir, I, I see you. I. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's improving a little because some of them say, I enjoy it. I, I really enjoy it. I enjoy it. And they just keep wanting to shake and say, I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. And you can see I'm searching for something else to say. But... <laughs> <laughs> but consider. Uh, just a little weekend wrap-up. A decade wrap-up. Everybody knows what this is. And when I say this, I don't mean me, and I don't mean you, and I don't mean us, except for this. Me and you and us and now is all we got. So I can appear to be magnanimous or have a, a great historical cosmic view and say, ah, this is not a local phenomenon of just us. It is worldwide. It's beyond time and et cetera, et cetera, which is true, except it's not true. Because if it were not local, nobody would know it existed anyway. So you can say, well... This form of it, that there is a revolution and it comes out in a form, or there is like this absolutely infinite transient business. Let's call it a business instead of a revolution. And the business is so gigantic, it is engaged in such import, export, business, intergalactic, interuniversal, it's so large that you can't even say what it is. And so you can get some people, I guess, that watch science fiction movies or some crap go, wow. But forget them. Let's talk about sane people. A sane person would go, well, what the hell does that mean? And he said, wait a minute. Just trust me that there is something that, that big. But the only way that you can know how it exists is apparently have a local franchise of it. <laughs> and they go, ah, now we're getting somewhere. And then you tell them, but that's not it. And then they go, ah. You understand? Of course, you don't have to worry about us doing it or me doing it to you or you doing it to me or you doing it to somebody else because it's your own brain trying to do that which is different. But at any rate, if you keep talking like that, as you all know, it appears to be nothing but a merry-go-round. There's nowhere to get on, nowhere to get off, and you think, well, this means something. And it almost means nothing because the worst part about it is now and anywhere else, and you can't actually do this, of course, but people have always tried that were involved with it, to pull the name out from under you. It's only after it dies that it gets a good solid name and can become a business. It's like the great hamburger business before Ray Kroc showed up and messed up everything in California back in the 40s where it was. There was this, the McDonald brothers were saying these great, I know that you, you people are going to figure this metaphor is going to drown. <laughs> the McDonald brothers were serving, I'm just kind of making, were serving these great Hamburgers that you never heard of because it was right there, I forget, but I think Los Angeles. And you'd never heard of them. I mean, all you people living in Peoria and Little Rock and Redding and Hershey. He had to bring it to your hometown. He had to think up the golden arches and he had to you know, fix it up to where everything tasted the same and that you could depend on the quality. Well, he learned from Harvard Johnson, who was, by the way, a tuba player <laughs> in another life. <laughs> But once it became McDonald's, then everybody knew what it was. But if you said, well, wait a minute, the origins of this was something else. If that was too strange, how about this? Since I don't mean it. Uh, the ideas about religion, etc. Uh, to somebody who can see anything, it's not offensive, and it's nothing to complain about, but religion of all sorts. The whole institution of religion is like a franchise. And if you know anything, you understand that you, know, you wouldn't fool with that. And I say that casually. It's not that there's anything wrong with it. But you wouldn't go down to a local McDonald's if you found out, wait a minute, this is just a cheap franchise. They're serving the good stuff. And, of course, it's always somewhere else. It wouldn't be Los Angeles. I just had to use a 3-D example. It would be somewhere just offshore where you keep seeing that mysterious whale now that Kairut pointed out. Just over the horizon is where it is. And here local is a franchise. 
And so again, what the only thing it does to the brain is you say, all right, what are we talking about here? And all these ideas you find somewhat interesting. I'll play both parts as usual. An ordinary person goes, yeah, kind of. And, but you don't, I know that it sounds kind of vague, uncertain, and inspecific, I have to say the least. But it's not a game. It's because the reality of this is inspecific and uncertain from a 3D view. Huh? All right. Let me put it to you this way. When it gets close to actually existing to you, then it doesn't need a name. You don't care what it is. And let's assume I'm going to play the part of somebody a little better than average. And they go, ooh, that almost sounds interesting. But after that, the mind absolutely breaks down at any ordinary level. And then all you can do is make one of the, from the Western view in your time, uh, my best example is to say it becomes like a Cracker Jack or egg roll fortune cookie version of Zen. Well, you're just talking in circles and you're asking, you know, what's the sound of one hand eating a hamburger? Or <laughs> calling for a maitre d'. Man. But people will get intrigued up to the point of actually buy a book saying Zen for Americans or Zen for meat lovers. And they go, hey, I like this because I read the book and it keeps taking you up to the point and you think, boy, this almost makes sense. And then it's like the author goes, boy, I love it. We're not talking about that. People that love that might as well be in a parade. They might as well be get a McDonald's franchise if they had enough money. But it's not going to do anything. It's that you have to realize that what this is, and if you're interested in it, what it is is you're trying to get over the horizon. You're trying to get just over where the mind works. And if me or somebody else, if you thought uh, me is irrelevant, but if you thought that somebody was doing it, this platoon, I'm talking about somebody else, and they were doing the same kind of stuff that we seem to be doing on this program, these tapings. And they kept talking about certain things. You go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And every night you think, well, exactly what is it? You know, how do I join? How much do I have to send? Or how much are you going to send me? You know, do we have to swap wives or tongues or spit? Or do I have to move to your town? <laughs> or will you fly overhead and, you know, do something terrible to us? You know, what's the point? And there doesn't seem to be a direct response. Like, well, maybe there is no point. And then you get disturbed, the mind, not you personally, but your mind gets disturbed. But what was it that attracted, assuming you were attracted to it in some <laughs> sane way, that you're actually attracted to, to this in you? Because you're not get, you don't get attracted to it at the local level. You just think you do. But if you don't get past that, of course, you become a follower of something. Or you go join a church. Or you'll say, well, all right, go ahead. Hell, blow the works. Give me a double Big Mac. <laughs> And fries, giant fries, and put some extra grease on those suckers. <laughs> but what you're doing, the idea that Kairou presented several times over the last couple of weeks of saying that everybody at one time has a great idea, but they don't know what to do with it, or another version that everybody at one time, or many people, he said many, I'll tell you everybody, every sane body, suspects the truth at one time, but damn few people want to know, which... If you're the ones, ones that thought you suspect the truth, and plus if you were still an ordinary smart ass, you'd go, yeah, I like that. But hell, if you're going, that's as far as you're going to go, you might as well go off the Old Testament and find out, or the New Testament, about many are called and few are chosen. Because you think, hey, it's just a couple of us can do it. That's not it. It's that at any given time, the sane people, because of the nervous system of life, want to know more than they know. Or else they wouldn't go to school. They wouldn't get an expensive haircut. You wouldn't try to be sexy. You wouldn't exercise. You want to know more than you know. If you're alive and you're sane. And so you're trying to see just over the horizon. But when you get confronted with the possibility of just over the horizon, maybe you find something like this sounds to be, and you think, all right, all right, all right. Where is it? Point me. What is it? And the people seem, shall we say, disinclined to actually point directly. Or you say, well, what is it? I can almost smell it. So many people rightfully say, I almost smelled and suspected this stuff before I ever heard of you or this stuff. So this has got to be it. Which way? Where do I go? What is it? What is it? I've been, years and years I've been reading. I've tried everything from metaphysics to religion to science. What is it? What is it? You must know. I can just tell what is it. And if the person does know, and you keep thinking, well, I see these, you know, the water shooting up. And I know that whale's out there. I can see, almost see over the horizon. What is it? And the person won't tell you. What do you do? Pretty soon you think, well, you know, screw this. Or else you think, I guess that covers it. <laughs>
But there, I could say is the problem because that makes many people feel good to say, oh, a problem. I love it. I love it. Let's sit down here and have a coffee. And, uh, well, they don't have service here, but I was going to say, and another order of fries. It appears to be a problem because you are, if you're interested in such as this, your brain it keeps wanting to circle around the shoreline. It keeps thinking, I can almost smell something out there. I almost see that whale. I just know it's right over the horizon somewhere. And I just know that this activity must know where it is. Would you tell me? And the reality of it is, beyond all words, that if somebody knew, they're not going to tell you. If they thought you really wanted to know, if you're just an ordinary person, hell, they might tell you anything. That's all it's got. It's the spirit of Ray Kroc. <laughs> but if somebody did know, they're not going to say anything. Not like, well, there it is. And it's not just a dance between you and somebody else. Because if you get that close, you're not going to do it to you. Because you've got to dance, even if you found somebody and you say, well, wait a minute, I believe you know what it is. And the person went, well, mm -hmm. you say, well, what is it? And you went, well, I don't want to tell you. And you drug it out of them. Yeah, maybe you gave them ten bucks. And so they go, all right, I'll tell you. And they tell you. It's not just their fault. And it's not just a dance between you and them because your brain has to go ahead and play and go, aha. That is, all right, I knew that and I agree or else you're wrong. So it's your brain doing it. So you understand, you've got to dance with you first. Always here, you've got to believe, hey, this is my band. They are playing my dance. Or they are playing a dance. I don't like it which is the same thing as, I believe I'll dance. <laughs> but as you have got to, even if you apparently hear from an external source, that I just know there is something great. There is something, there is a dance of change. There's a way that I could be participating in change. There is something beyond all of this. Not God's, and not heaven's and all that, because it's right here. I just keep saying I'm like that, but it's here. And I almost know what it is. Well, you tell me, and if somebody says, all right, it's so-and-so. It's the X factor. And you go, I knew it. It is not just a dance between you and them now that they put a name on it, because your mind has to go ahead and fall down and take a nap, relax. It has to have the wind taken out of it. you got to quit rebelling, because you've done it. you understand? Just because they said, well, you're right. You badgered me, you begged me, and you paid me all your money, so I'll tell you, it is the X factor. You're right. And you went, God, now I knew it. I've been suspecting it for years. Well, you're right. The suspect is over. It's all over. You done quit dancing. Because the horizon has got to continue to recede. It's got to get stay at the same kind of position or else you're no longer dancing. You have. I could be real crude and say you quit dancing, but as long as you're alive, we'll hold out some hope. You're just taking a serious break. You went over and you sat behind that potted plant and you probably got a bat wing in your pocket. That's a flash for you people out of town. It's a half pint. You're sweating like a stuck hog and you're just sitting there and you're bitching about the band or when they're going to play something I like. But you have quit dancing. Uh, Kairou ran through five and struck them out. Or strew them through the readings tonight, if you recall all the ones about if you will dance, if you're prepared to dance for change, you'll never be lonely. If you're prepared to dance for change, you'll never be bored. If you're prepared to dance for change, you'll never be angry. If you're prepared to dance for change, change is prepared to dance with you. But if it, you and change are not dancing, you're not rebelling. If you have come to some conclusion, if it's just, well, I've come to the conclusion by God that you're right. Well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just as tickled as a woodpecker with a lame leg. Because if you've done that to you, no matter what you say. It's like people saying, I found God all my life. I wanted to know the truth, and now I found it. But in ordinary love, you think, my God, I'm so proud for the man. Success. But Kairou pointed out, in the secondary world, what men call the triumphs of life. And it's not an attack. 
But what men call the triumphs, the victories of life, and the success of the revolutionists are not the same thing. It's not better or worse. Different. Because at the ordinary mental level, here, if indeed you apparently have reached success, well, I have all my life, I've read philosophy and I've heard this other crap, but I knew, I knew in my heart of hearts that it had to do with inside of myself. Don't forget that. That I knew it had to do with God, and now i found God. Well, you'd say, well, what a success. I always wanted to find a mystical teacher, and I traveled to Nepal, Tibet, right outside of Peking, and then back to Akron, and I found one. And you say, well, I, if you had to respond, you say, well, I'm delighted for you. But you know what that means, don't you? Well, to them, well, that's success. I always wanted to know the secret of life, and I found it. But you don't have to ask them what. Just look, checking your book of cliches, and it's one of them. But they go, I'm, I spent 20 years. I took drugs. I almost killed myself. I drank a lot, and I ran through women. And, but now I found it. Now, now I have peace and happiness. I found the truth. I've taken Jesus as my Savior, or whatever they say. I have now found a home. I live, I live downstairs in the building where the AA meets, here in my hometown. <laughs> but whatever it is, and you, from their view, from their view, I have succeeded. But you understand, because success is, like, well, all my life I wanted to have a Jaguar. Success is, save enough money to buy a Jaguar, and it's like, well, I can, you know, count one thing off. I have reached one, one of my goals. But you understand what that means? Except from the ordinary view, it means success. Success means success. Dummy, what are you asking? Well, I'm saying if you're successful, then you quit doing it. Well, what the hell do you think success means? See? You do see, don't you? If you succeed in that, and normally I get pretty crude, and assume you get the point, I say that kind of success is suicidal. Except the ordinary view, that's insane. Success is... I wanted to save $100. I saved $100. I had to go without food. I had to work two jobs. I saved $100. I succeeded. What do you, what's wrong with that? Nothing. Well, I wanted to do it, and I did it. Now I can worry about something else. I can you know, worry about saving $200. Or I can worry about something else. Right. Except when you're trying to do this. I don't know what this is. I don't know what's over the horizon. If you find what's over the horizon, wherever you are, you can say, well, that's successful. But if you can say it's successful, you're back where you were. All right, you're back in the city, and now you're staying on top of a matchbox. I mean, well, you've raised yourself up in life, except you're back where you were and maybe standing on a midget. I'll give you that. A small person maybe with a matchbox in their pocket. Because if you have seen over the horizon, if you have seen more than you ever saw, and you go, aha, I knew it. You understand right then from a revolutionary view to say, aha, I knew it. Simultaneously, you're also going, boy, dumb time revisited. Because that's exactly what it is. Success, I hate to do this, success is failure. I knew you'd get around to some kind of cheap-ass San Francisco Zen talk. No. From ordinary view, success is success. And they're right. Except trying to see over the horizon and thinking, aha, now I see it. Right, you can, but it's only good for that. Because if you see it, now you are the horizon. Now it's going nowhere. Success has killed me. The revolution did that, and then I forget who it was. They're the ones that still had the idea. What was it? Was successful? Rock Hunter? Or that Broadway show? No. Nah. The revolutionist view is it's not a question. Success won't just spoil Rock Hunter. It'll kill the son of a bitch. That's why all institutions are dead. That's why religions are dead. That's why any idea that anybody ever had, including you, <laughs> is dead. That's why you can talk about it. That's why it seems to be sort of comfortable. You know, it's only... Kyrie had a person there. Are we still rolling at all? Yes. Is it pointed out that, hey, you can't dance with the dead? And that's not true. If you couldn't dance with the dead, this world would not be going on. <laughs> the dead can always be danced with. You pick them up and you dance with them. You attempt to breathe life back in them. That is the continuity. That is what makes the apparent horizon and, and life itself on a large scale continues to expand the horizon. Maybe they'd want to say, push the envelope. But they keep pushing the horizon and it gets wider and wider. But you do it by dancing with the dead. You do it by the sensation that there is a renaissance always upon us. 
which Kyra would point out, is that feeling that the Renaissance, this feeling that, well, life maybe is not really going down the toilet. Maybe things can get better. At least it's our sworn duty, it's our honorable duty to try and make it so. But then they feel like that this Renaissance has as its goal local health, local improvement. And as long as you're caught up in that, the way Kyra put it, was then you end up attempting to do remedial therapeutic work down in the geriatric wards rather than doing time in the nursery. And people don't realize it, but you're continually trying to prop up the dead. And I do all this, you attempt to prop it up here. And you're supposed to. If you didn't, you would be insane. That's another way to describe people who are locked up, which are no interest to our discussions. But if you do lose touch with the past, you are certifiable. You don't have to worry more about saving $100. You don't need money. The state will take care of you. <laughs> but you have got, to, if you lose, well, even speaking very specifically, neurologically, you all know this, severe, or any case, but of complete amnesia, people that, and it can happen apparently like, you know, traumas, and it can happen through slips, you know, a surgeon is going, achoo, you know, while he's doing brain surgery. <laughs> and it's where people are still so-called, quote, conscious and can get around, but it's like the past continually drops off of their radar screen as soon as it happens. And they can't do anything. And they say, well, you've got to have a continuity because such people, they decide, uh, or somebody says, you, you're like you're sweating, uh huh? And they say, well, go get something to drink, get something cold. And they go, okay. And they start walking in their kitchen, and they, it's, by the time they get there, they don't know what they're doing. Why am I here? And so you can say, well, that's serious business. That that is really some kind of specific physical problem. Forget just this specifically in those kind of anomalistic neural cases of physical injury. It is true in your ordinary thought. There is a continuity, and it's not just you. It's the complete memory of your genes of what's going on in life. And it's proper. They're continually propping each other up. The old man and the kid do not just dance in that sequential fashion. That's why I know it seems maybe unusually curious. But last time, Kyra pointed out one guy staggered in the library and was mentioning what fun it was to be able to be amongst the dead. But then he, referring to books, you understand, and dead ideas, but then pointed out that it was almost or not quite as much fun as it would have been if you had been there to originally kill your ancestors, which is not impossible. It would be inefficient, but you could have done it. They can still do it to you, which is what happens when you suffer such brain traumas. Because taken on a wide scale, everyone's horizon, sanity, is that there is a continuity, the contiguousness of human thought. And people get attracted to this, but the attraction is, what if things were so abrupt that they were not comfortable? Which is back to another Kyrie, is why the dead to most people, are the only ones, dead ideas, of course, that the dead are really Mr. and Ms. non-abrupt. They're, the they're the ones that are sufficiently non-abrupt to be sort of comfortable companions for ordinary people. And they are, even if people don't like it. If people are going to sit around there with some kind of debate and guys saying in a coffee shop arguing, religion has ruined the world, let's say. And that guy says, nah, religion has saved the world. And the guy saying religion's been the downfall of man or will be, he could consider himself an avant-garde thinker. He could say, well, I'm a progressive. But they are both dancing with the dead. They're only comfortable with that. But you could say, all right, I hear all that, but all right, you walk into a coffee shop and you sit down and say something that is not connected with the dead. And of course they got me because you can't do it. Oh, sure you can, but it'd just be like, what? Because it is right over the horizon. You understand? I can go in and say something non-sequential. I could go, just go in and say something and just blabber. I could do, you know, sound like Elmer Fudd on drugs or something. <laughs> <laughs> and so for the sake of me talking to an ordinary person and saying, well, you go in there and talk about something. You go in there and intellectually you refuse to dance with the dead. Go in and sit with those two guys arguing over religion or whatever and you do something that would not exemplify dancing with the dead, intellectually speaking. And they got me. Because you can't. If you do, they don't hear it or just would absolutely, I just have to willfully make it sound like Bible. 
And you can say, see, it doesn't accomplish anything. There's the point. Mm -hmm. There is why this doesn't have a name. There is why you go, well, I like this. But what the hell does it mean? <laughs> well, if it meant anything, you wouldn't like it. If you could be a rebel. Because I can say, all right, I'm going to admit it. Here's what it is. And then what it's done is like you have... It's almost like intellectually uncircumcising yourself. You're grabbing the horizon of the intellect and you're pulling the skin back up while saying, well, so I'll reveal more. And you're revealing less. Write me about that. Figure that one out. <laughs> All you metaphor freaks. Well, I understood it. But it's like saying, well, tell me what this is. And if you did, so all right, I'll tell you. By God, I've had enough of this. And you people quit riding me and stuffing me in Kairut on the street. And saying, which one of you is Kairu? Well, <laughs> if I said, all right, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you right, what's right over this horizon that you've always been worried about. That's always itched. And if I took it and said, I'm going to pull it down and tell you what it is, here's what would happen. <laughs> because you wouldn't notice because then I'd put a name on it to be like, sir, I'm going to pull down this horizon and let you see that mysterious fish floating out there. I'll let you see the parallel tracks just over the ones on which your train is now running. You go, yes, yes. You say, all right, here it is. I'm going to pull it down. And you go, all right, I'm ready. And now I say, all right, it's the X factor. And you go, ha, ha, I knew it. <laughs> or I don't believe it, which, you know, same thing. But you understand it's saying, all right, I'm going to pull it down. You knew that this information is not in Tibet. It's not 5,000 years ago. It's in here. It's in the genetic nervous system of humanity, of life. And it's always just over the horizon. It's just over the horizon and tomorrow. Yes, 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 I got it. All right, I'll pull it down just for you. You are the one that, you sent me $20, right? Okay, I'll do it for you. <laughs> I'm going to pull it down and tell you what it is. But if you pull it down and tell what it is, what you're doing in essence is this. You understand? All right, it is. All right, are you ready? I'm going to tell you this once. It's the X factor. I knew it. Or, I don't believe it. <laughs> Can we send out a quick message, an epilogue, just a minute or so? Back on. Back on. Good morning, everybody. All you other citizens, I want to tell you right quick. Here's what I want people to do, all the other cities. I want again, an effort made in success of getting some more stations for this. And anywhere else, you may be hearing from Richard Shepard anyway, but uh, any stations that you've had any part of that are just showing 30 minutes rather than an hour, that is, rather than the car routes and this in one segment, try and get them to do an hour, the whole thing, like we're filming it. And if that proves to be impossible, there seems to be, we already know one case that worked, if they won't pull an hour show, then cut this in two and off from the car route is a different 30 minute show. And get them to do that there in whatever city it is, whatever it's cable, and then me talking for the rest, you know, for another 30 minute show. But I won't, whenever possible, slip them a tenor. <laughs> is get the whole thing put together, if at all possible, so that we're well, just like you're seeing the tapes that you're getting in other cities. So we got the car routes and this. Get us some more stations. You can do that. Not like asking you to actually send me twenty dollars in cash or do something extraordinary. We're talking about TV. We're talking about cable TV. Get some more stations. Other than that, bye. We wish you were here. We're about to have a party. We got some people from out of town, and you people are gonna miss it. <laughs> <clears throat> That's what you get for being in Canada and other weird places. <laughs> and also, hi to Clyde. How soon will Clyde be getting this? A day or so? A month. Oh. <laughs> well, Clyde's still high. And hi to everyone else. And watch it. <laughs> we know your names. We know where you live.